what the pay is and what the culture is. So um, you gotta pay the guys well, you gotta have um, pay structures in place to um, incentivize good behavior and quality work and to decentivize you know, poor behavior and poor quality work. And so we have refined that for years and years. And if somebody is too slow, if someone doesn't have enough humility, if someone doesn't have the right positive attitude, we're going to know within a few days that that guy doesn't fit our culture and he's going to be out. And our staff at the mover level really does the vetting. Uh, we do as much as we can pre-hire, and but post-hire, you got to identify who are the right guys, who are the guys that are engaged, who are the guys that are paying attention, who are the guys that are going to be able to serve that client the very best because we have extremely demanding clients and you know anything less than that is just not acceptable for us. That's great. It's, uh, it's so important to have people who are capable and have a good mood, like you said, to, to do the job because they're going to remove all the stress with you that you already have coming from the transaction of buying a new home or selling your home and relocating your entire life. And that's you know what I believe you really pay for is for that stress relief and the ability to move on and, and to have a clear mind and ready for your new location, your new life. Um, with that being said, you service some of the most expensive homes in Arizona, some of the largest, some of the wildest, uh, you know, art projects, installations. Uh, what would you say is the oddest request that you've ever had from a client to maybe move some really specific art or sculptures or or, uh, or you've gone above and beyond to, uh, you know, treat their home with a, as much respect and care as possible? Well, what pops in my head happened around Christmas, right after Christmas, we had this very old couple, I think they were in their 80s, they were um, Chinese Korean that were from Manhattan, and they were extremely successful, the, the husband was extremely successful in business, and they became this prolific philanthropy family um, and art collectors, and she had this vast collection of art in Desert Mountain. But she was like one of the most interesting ladies I had ever met in my whole life. She was just full of stories and you know, 85 or 90 years of, of living this lifestyle that you know only but a few people in the country have probably lived, including growing up under the Japanese occupation in China with a Korean background. So she was just a very interesting character. And she wanted our one of our movers to chauffeur them in their vehicle over to Los Angeles. And I was trying to work out with my travel schedule to be that person because I just wanted to sit with them for six or seven hours. But she had um, the most incredible art and she was an artist, so she had her own studio as well. We had to pack all of that. So that was just kind of from just a few months ago, a very interesting job. She, yeah. and, she, and ironically, she's moving to Los Angeles downtown Ritz Carlton Residence Penthouse above the JW Marriott. So just a unique project that uh, not a lot of furniture went, so for just some kind of heirloom, um, like high value, uh, mid-century modern things that were really important to her, but all of her art and sculptures. That's a great story. And, you know, as things get so digitized and turn into apps and websites, it, it's uh, important to think that it is a special care and a special attention that needs to go into moving your entire life. You know, when you guys say that you come out and you do free estimates, it's uh, a lot of work that goes into that to go to the home, look at someone's belongings, and, and with your knowledge and experience, you're probably identifying what it's going to take to do that safely, how you're going to preserve the home they're in and protect it from any kind of damage or issues. And during that estimate, there's a lot of education that we trans transmit over to the client. So they may have a rough idea of what it's going to take to move from A to B, but until our estimator comes out, um, they're really not going to know how to do it right. That's right. So that's why I rely on the experts and, and using referrals of companies and providers that know what they're doing. That when I hand off a client like my own, um, they're taken care of from beginning to end. So with that being said, what else do you do besides work? What do you do in your spare time? Uh, my favorite two things are, you know, spend time with my kids and then travel. Um, I think those are the things that drive me is pro provide my children with the most craziest experiences that I could have ever had when I was a child. We're going to London next Wednesday for 11 days with my mom, my girlfriend, my two sons that are 13 and 16. So those are the things that drive me. I like to work out. I know it doesn't look like it, but I do that every day. We have a gym over here. Um, Garrett comes, works out sometimes. So What other services or exciting things do you have going on with your company? Uh, value add, uh, additional services that feed into the moving process that most people aren't thinking of or that really become problems that you you can't plan for, but you've already planned for them and provide. Sure, so you may have an A to B move or you may have something a little bit more complex, but 
the escrow, the title, the mortgage, all of those things can throw wrenches into your A to B move. And storage is a great example of something that you're not using the right mover that's not sophisticated enough, not, com not competent enough, and doesn't offer storage services, or maybe is too small and doesn't have flexibility in their schedule. All of those things will become very problematic if you get some, some rent, uh, wrenches thrown into your transaction. Storage, for instance, if you have a simultaneous close or if you have homelessness for 12 to 24 hours because the banks are wiring money around, um, we can solve those problems. We can bring stuff into the warehouse. If you're doing a renovation as well, we can store stuff on the trucks overnight to solve that simultaneous close challenge. Um, we also provide uh, vendors that can do pre-move organizing, prep work. Um, we can pack, move, unpack, and trash haul, which kind of allows you in just a couple of days to literally be just like your day is today, how your house looks, we'll come in, we'll do everything, and we'll leave you in a way that looks like were pre-moved in just a couple of days. I think a lot of people don't know that movers can do all of those things. You can even install all the artwork on the wall. Wow, so there are a lot of issues that come up from moving that the average consumer or home seller doesn't know. And that's why when I started referring people to Derek, it's, I knew that all the services they provide solve all the problems that could possibly come up. Um, you know, it was really good to, to do this interview with you today. I've known you for many years and, and respect your company and, and all the achievements and service you've been able to bring to people here in Arizona. Uh, if anyone wants to get in contact with you, how can they reach you? Uh, best way is call our office, 480-695-6621. Uh, choose option one, that'll be uh, go to Blake's desk and you can schedule an estimate with an estimator. You can schedule a job if it's small and you can do a FaceTime uh, estimate. Or you can you guys can call myself, 602-820-3559. All right, and that's Jared. Right at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Make that happen. All right. That's right. <laughs> so that's Derek Green with Get Your Move On, local Arizona company who's been operating here and serving the Valley since 2005. 2005. Thanks.